Hello. Okay, so the literacy strategy I had was Reader's Theater for Mercy Suarez. So before we dive into my Reader's Theater, let's talk a little bit about what it is. So a Reader's Theater is a dramatic performance of a script by a group of readers. So for Mercy Suarez, what I did was adapt chapter five, or the first part of chapter five into a script, into a little play talking because there were a lot of characters, so it'd be easy to do in a big group. And it was varied lines, so some people had Mercy, because she is the narrator, and Miss Tannenbaum, and, and that had a lot of lines, but there were a lot of smaller characters. So if you had students that weren't, not necessarily not wanting to act, but didn't feel necessarily comfortable with acting in front of their peers, and like performing, um, there were some smaller roles, so that they could work on like, making scenes or like directing behind the scenes or even like if it's an older group and they're writing the script they can help more with the writing aspect than being in front during the performance so it's kind of really adaptable to the kind of learners that you have in your class or if you have some ELL students that aren't really comfortable with like fully speaking yet not fully speaking yet but like understanding I understanding of some of the words in the book that they can work on some of the behind the scenes stuff and do what they're comfortable with because I think Reader's Theater is a really cool tool that can be used in the classroom but it also is something with the dramatic performance aspect of it that can make some students uneasy and uncomfortable and that's not what we want. We want this to be a really fun and really cool opportunity for students that's not retelling in an essay, retelling in more formal ways. It's them being able to perform and acting out and being creative instead of, you know, the formal ways that they've done in the past. Um, so to use this, um, students have opportunity to enjoy reading good literature and this strategy encourages them to engage with the text, interpret characters and bring the text to life. So obviously with the dramatic performance, you will be actually bringing the text to life because they'll be performing it in front of the class. But this way, um, books with a lot of conversation and a lot of speech can be easily interpreted into reader's theater. So being able to take those good texts that the kids are reading and being able to perform it for everybody else. And it's something too that you can take little excerpts of from any book. So if there's different guided reading groups, all the students might, might not be aware of each book and like what they're going for, not going for, but like what they're telling. But they can all enjoy a little theater. And it could be a cool way if a group is going to be reading a book after another that they could preview the book, like a little book, like a book trailer, but in person and as a little theater. I remember something like when I was younger, like this was my favorite thing to do after reading books was readers theater. Um, so how to set it up, super easy. Um, you're gonna set up a script. I can show you mine now. Maybe, one second. Um, I, so you just set up a script and it starts with the characters and goes through to the lines. So here we go, perfect. So how I have it up here, I have the title of the book and the excerpt I used was from chapter five. So I said, Mercy Suarez Changes Gears, Chapter 5, Reader's Theater. Um, first, I have all the characters, which I color-coded because it's easier for me to read and kind of pick out who's who and who's talking. And you can look at the frequency and, like, how often and how much people are talking through this day. So I like that. Um, so all the characters are up here. And then we get into the script. That includes some stage directions, but I didn't want to include too many because if I was giving this to a group of students, part of the task is to interpret um, characters. So I wanted to give them some opportunities, but like some of the things it's kind of like more obvious about. So like Mercy is obviously narrating part of this or internally speaking for the through most of the novel. So I included the times that she was speaking in her head and times she was speaking out loud. So they, like, she's not talking and she goes, I pretend I don't hear her as she, they're like talking to the character or whoever's playing Edna. So it's just kind of making it, making more sense, but not stepping in too far. 
Um, we can go through and look at the script. So we have Edna, Mercy, and Miss Tannenbaum speaking more frequently just because at the beginning of the novel or at the beginning of the chapter, that's who's talking the most. And then down here we get Rachel, Hannah, and Lena, and Michael. So those people or those students who pick those parts could work on other aspects of the reader's theater. Or since I do have eight people and that's a really big group, you could also combine like Lena and Rachel and Hannah into one or two people so that you can have a smaller group because not eight, group, eight people is a lot and other groups might need more or the same people. Um, a cool strategy that you could do with this is once all of the students have this ready, is you could go through the book, the reader's theater. So start with the earliest um, chapter or script that people have and go towards the end of the book and see how people read and interpret different characters through each step of the book. I think that would be really cool. Um, like I said, for upper grades, they could develop their own script from what they've read and, or they're assigned a certain part of the book, but the script that they develop is all up to them. And, but for lower elementary school, it'll be a lot easier to give students a script with characters and all of the um, resources available so they can just get to the performance part. Um, students can memorize their parts if that's what they really want to do, but it's okay if they don't. Um, I know there was times, I mean, even now, I don't like speaking in front of the class all the time because it makes me kind of uncomfortable. Um, so students can have their scripts with them or they can leave them. Don't put the pressure of like having to have all of this memorized on them because you want this to be fun. You want your students to learn in a fun way. And if you're putting the pressure of memorizing, doing whatever, it's gonna make it harder on them and they're not gonna to wanna to do it again in the future. But that's not what we want. So yeah, this is my script. I just did the first couple pages just because there was a lot of talking and conversations and it was a really funny part. Not necessarily funny, but they were talking about the boyfriend, Michael Clark, as Mercy's boyfriend. And it was just funny. And Miss Tannenbaum um, introing their first project. So, yeah. Um, the next thing I have just wanted to talk about was like how to use the instructional strategy and it was really it's really easy so you're gonna either you're gonna select a script so like I said a second ago either you assign scripts or you sign a part of a book or you say here you go you can't pick the same as others and then groups come to you with what they want to do and I'm guessing, unless there's one huge part of the book that every group's going to want to do, it's going to be really easy to spread it out. Um, so each, there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, and then you're going to rehearse the production. So students are going to assign themselves parts. Um, like I also said, there's a lot of roles, but also if a student's not comfortable, don't make them do anything. We could find a behind the scenes somewhere either they work harder with developing the script or behind the scenes stuff um with rehearsing the production you can build a scene i remember in one of my readers theaters we got to actually like construct but if you don't have that laying around too we've also used like projector screens and so with this scene it was in a classroom so it was kind of easy to just like rearrange desks to put them in groups so the kids are all in groups but you could put a desk on you know a classroom on a projector and have it work that way. And so the last step would be to stage the production so students actually get up and perform and put it all to work. Um, I remember my favorite readers theater, our teacher brought in like movie snacks and like so like some candy and popcorn and we got to have like cups of water or whatever with us and so while we watched we got to like snack and it was like a big play a big production and I think that would be really fun to incorporate with lower level elementary school kids that's going to make them more and more excited about doing it in the future um the book also had a really cool piece about like going digital with this and especially in this time of literally everything being digital um you could also make readers theater into a reader's podcast which I thought was kind of cool so you could interview interview different characters or like interview not interview just portray different characters in the podcast and like ask them like a q a or kind of whatever 
and take it into the digital world, which we love in this time. So yeah, thank you.